CAT 6A means advanced or enhanced CAT 6. Okay. And after that, in the 2015, as you can see, with IEEE-8023BQ, okay, we uh, we have the option to for using the uh, CAT8 in class one and class two cabling with more up to 40 gigabit per second. Look at here. Here we have CAT8, e, CAT and the speed is 25 gigabit per second, but the real speed is up to 40 gigabit per second. This means that. As, uh, from the 1919 to 2015, we reached from the 10 megabit per second to 40 gigabit per second. Okay, uh, and this means that the Ethernet is uh, enhancing every day. Very good. The first question is that it is uh, is it necessary that we learn all of the codes I triple eight auto three I three U three A B three A N three B Q no, it's not necessary to, uh, for example, remember all of these codes, but it is better after re reviewing more and more to, uh, for example, remembering these codes in your mind. Don't forget that uh, uh, you need both of the information and knowledge. If you have more information, you will be, uh, for example, uh, more, uh, you, you will have more uh, capability ability uh, to uh, for example be a master in the network because of that it's better to write uh, them in one for example paper and after some reviewing you will remember it okay i'm sure okay very good until now we learned about the twisted pair types in these two table first we learned that we have uh, different categories from cat 2 to cat 8 about the twisted pair cables and also here we have we can see the historical progress of the enhancement of the um, twisted pair cables but you know that 10 base t 100 base t 1000 base t 10 g base t 40 j 40 g base t all of them are using the rj45 as the connector and only the s and also eight wire and also four pairs but the uh, the uh, for example a material that they that we are using in these cables are different and they can for example forward or send more traffic okay you can look at here 40 g means 40 billion bit per second can be sent uh, from the category of eight okay let me to review a little about the uh, fiber optic cables but before then i'm going to talk to talk about the base first let me to say what is the base you know the the first number is the speed the last character is the uh, for example twisted pair okay but what is the base it's it's good to understand the base keyword base means baseband let me to review it you know that when you are uh, using the uh, for example a dsl internet let me to give you one example it's interesting for you when you are using dsl internet okay you have one uh, for example modem or one rotor this is connected to the uh, phone line okay this is the phone line and then the phone line connected to the uh, telecommunication company or isp after that you can connect uh, to your uh, home router for connecting to the internet okay you know it and also you know that when you are using the dsl internet the phone line uh, is not busy Okay, and you can use your uh, digital phone uh, for uh, calling your friend. You know it. Okay, how we can send two uh, type of information from one phone line? Look at here. This is my phone. Okay, uh, and you know that we are using again the same phone, uh, this the same phone line for talking with our friends. How we can send different information from one phone line? Let me to show you, uh, this is interesting. Here, this is the phone line. Assume that this is the phone line, okay? In phone line with DSL technology, we have two frequencies, okay? Look at here. Let me to review. The numbers is not important, but let me to say that this is the phone line, okay? And we can, divide the frequencies in this phone line into two parts the first from zero to four kilohertz okay this is zero and this is four kilohertz okay and we can send the voice 
from in these frequencies from 0 to 4 kilohertz this is the voice traffic at our conversation with our friends and also from 4k to 1.1 megahertz we can send and receive data because of that you know that here we have some frequency for sending the data and also some frequency for frequency for receiving the data because this is the ADSL uh, this means that the receiving frequency is more than the sending frequencies but it's not important as you can see here we are using the phone line for two type of traffic we dividing the phone phone line into two or more than two range of frequencies okay this is the broadband okay we call it broadband and in this course i'm not going to talk about the broadband broadband connections are not the topic that I, we need to learn about them in the ccna okay this is the service provider course it's courses topic but in the lan we are using all of the frequency range of the uh, for example one cable for sending the data we don't have any dividing in the frequencies because of that we call it baseband this is the baseband communication okay and this is the broadband communication okay very good and the, when you when you say 10 base t means you are using 10 megabit per second and this is a baseband baseband technology and you are using also twisted pair this is the meaning of the baseband and this is beyond the scope of this course but i i, I wanted to uh, talk about that for more information okay very good now we can talk about a little about the uh, fibers i will talk about the fiber more than this but for now let me to review the fiber in the fiber world okay we have three a uh, type of communication okay let me uh, to write here it's uh, good to understand the detail of the uh, fiber in the future but for now we can talk a little about the fiber look at here when you have a fiber you can use three uh, type of the uh, frequencies the first type of uh, frequency or the first type of wavelength is the a small wavelength in fiber when you are using a small wavelength you uh, you are using 850 nanometer wavelength the detail is not important only you should inform about this uh, for example information after that we have another wavelength we call it long wavelength in long wavelength you are using 130 10 okay nanometer wavelength and after that we have extra long let me write here extra long and in extra long wavelength we are using 1550 nanometer that's it if the wavelength is more uh, when you are using wavelength with more value you will have lower loss because of that you can extend your fiber more and more for example let me to talk about that that this is uh, here you can see s l and e s means a small wavelength l means a uh, long wavelength and when you can see e means extra long okay let me to talk about that for example in this uh, in the 1998 the ieee released one standard ieee 802.3z and as you can see here this is the thousand base sx okay it means thousand megabit per second or one gigabit per second is the speed of this technology this is baseband technology after that it uses a small wavelength okay with one gigabit per second after that we have thousand base lx and x again here we have the same speed but let me to say that the distance that that this technology sx can support is less than the distance of the lx or x for example this is two kilometer but the lx and x can support up to 10 kilometer or more than this okay because of that when you see s l or e okay or some other terms s r this these are different types of the fiber optic about the wavelength every when you are using the more wavelength you will have more extent okay but the speed is same look at here 
again here we have one gigabyte per second but the distance of these cables are different also also here we have uh, another term another term type of cabling is single mode and fiber mode we have two type of fibers smf or m and also mmf smf and mmf i will talk about the smf and mmf in the next video but for now let me to say that with multi multi mode fiber we have less extension but with single mode fiber we have more extension don't worry about the detail i will show i will talk about them in the next video but for now as you can see in the 1998 the i3 released the 80 to the 3z and with this technology we reached to the one gigabyte per second of data rate but in the 1999 one year after the 1998 the i3 release i3 80 to the 3ab and with this technology we uh, could send one gigabyte per second or up to one gigabyte per second over the cable this means that first IEEE with these standards uh, permitted uh, sending the, uh, for example, one gigabyte per second over a fiber. After then, after that, uh, after one year, uh, we could send this amount of traffic over a cable. And after that, here you can see the progress in the history. Look at here in 2003, IEEE released 802.38AE. And as you can see, we have 10G base, SR means again, the short wavelength, R means LAN. And after that long wavelength and ER, here we have 10 gigabyte per second, okay, over the MF and SMF. But you know that we, here we have differences about the, uh, for example, distance, but the speed is same. Again, in 2006, now we have the capability of sending 10 gigabyte per second over a cable, CAT6, for example. And here, you can see in 2010, 2015, we reached to 40 gigabyte per second, 100 gigabyte per second, and 400 gigabyte per second. Maybe if you search now, maybe you, you will find more than this, okay? But look at here, until to 2016, this technology, 400 gigabyte per second, was under the development, okay? You will learn more than this about this technology. Okay, let me to talk about the fiber optic and another features of the uh, physical Ethernet in the next video. Now it's the good time for reviewing all of the features I mentioned. I mentioned in this uh, video. I explained them. It's so important for you to understand to learn the information, the fundamentals of the Ethernet, because you will configure many scenarios in this course and also in the future courses about the ethernet for example you will learn about the switching about the vlan about the stp or other features about uh, that is related to the ethernet if you understand all of the things that now we are talking about that you will be uh, one uh, you will be a, a for example master in the ethernet and in the switching all right, after reviewing all of the topics I mentioned in this video, please come with me to the next video. I will talk about again Ethernet LANs.